Welcome to another video. I have a problem here just to clarify the controversy over the selection or the claim that E was the best number to use for computing this problem. I had this problem in mind but somehow I got injured and I couldn't do anything. I'm currently wearing a brace so I may not be as crisp in my movement but I think the math is going to be crisp. Let's get into the video. So for that problem, I was able to show that it is better for you to repeat a certain number for you to maximize the highest product you're going to get of those numbers you added together. We said using the same number repeatedly helps your exponential height. But I said the best number to use, and I showed a graph, was E. However, because it was a number theory problem, I didn't want to do calculus. But this calculus um, explanation is going to justify why E is the best and the only number you should be using. And it's going to answer some other questions that came as addendum to the problem. So, let's start. So let's say there's a certain number you're going to add up several times to get 1976, according to that problem. Okay, what can that number be? We don't know the number of times because we don't know what T is. Could it be just half of this two times? Or could it be divide this by three? Okay, now, we don't know. But one thing we can tell from this expression is that if you multiply X by T, you're going to get 1976. So let's start with that. So, x t equals 1976, right? And we need to maximize x to the t. <laughs> that was a sharp pain. We need to maximize x to the t. I need to watch my movement, okay? Um, Okay, now don't say go take a rest because I was planning to do that, but I was told to not rest. I should just be gentle. I need to exercise my back, okay? So, x to the t is what we need to maximize. Will be equal to 1976 divided by t. Let y be equal to x to the t. We want this to be the biggest number possible, which was what the question was asking. Okay, so in order to maximize this, we're going to say y is then equal to, instead of writing x, we write 1976 over t raised to power t. Okay. So, now, I could have written this in terms of x, but it doesn't matter which way I write it. Now, I've written it in terms of t. So, if we find t, we can easily go find what x is. So, let's see. Whew. So, what we can do now is take the natural log of both sides, because I want to do differentiation. And once you have an exponential function, you want to take the natural log so you can easily differentiate logarithmic differentiation. So, we're going to say ln of y must be equal to ln of 1976 over t raised to power t. This clearly gives you t ln of 1976 over t. Okay, that's ln of y. Um, we can actually rewrite this. Remember, logarithmic differentiation, you make it easy. So we can rewrite this and say this is actually t times ln of 1976 minus ln of t. This is what we have, and this is ln of y. Now, I am going to differentiate both sides. If I differentiate this side, remember the derivative of a natural log function is basically the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. So this is going to be y prime over y will be equal to. This is the, apply the product rule here. Differentiate the first, keep the second, 
and keep the first, differentiate the second. If I differentiate the first, I'm gonna get one, and then I'm gonna keep this, so I have ln of 1976 minus ln of t plus, keep the first, differentiate the second. If I keep the first, I'm gonna get, is this plus? Yes, if I keep the first, I'm gonna get t, okay? And if I differentiate the second, this is going to give me zero, and this is going to give me um, minus one over t times negative one over t. That's what I get on this side. Let's put it in parentheses. So watch. This is equal to um, ln. In fact, I can rewrite this back as ln of 1976 over t minus one. That's my y prime over y. So ultimately, y prime will be equal to, if I multiply both sides by y, it's going to be um, ln of 1976 over t here minus one multiplied by y. But what did we say y was from the beginning? We said y is x to the t. So this is going to be times x to the t. Now, remember we're doing optimization. We're trying to maximize. At the maximum point or the minimum point, in this case it's going to be maximum, dy dx is always equal to zero. So at this point, this is equal to zero. Okay, so we say at max, y prime equals zero. What does it mean? If this is gonna be equal to zero, we know an exponential function will not be zero as long as x is not zero. Clearly x cannot be zero if we're gonna get 1976. It means only this one can be zero. And the only way this side can be zero is if this is equal to this, okay? So we say that ln of 1976 over t minus one equals zero. And what does that translate into? It means this is equal to one. If you move the one over, you have ln 1976 over t is equal to one. If you take the E of both sides, you're gonna end up with 1976 over T is equal to E. That's it. So that tells you that X, this X, which is 1976 over T is E. So therefore, x equals e. So the value of x that maximizes this number that we're trying to get here must be e. And if x equals e, we can easily find what t is. Let's actually find what t is because then t will be equal to 1976 divided by e, which is approximately 7 to 7. Okay. So that means if you take E and you multiply it 727 times, you're gonna end up with 1976. And if you raise E to power 727, you are going to get the highest possible exponent or number possible. Okay, now, according to the number theory problem, we cannot use E because E is not an integer. So what you do is you find the integer that is closest to E, remember? Since E is approximately 2.718, the closest integer to E is 3. Now, if you cannot use 3 every time, you have to use the next integer closest to this. It is not 4 and it is not 1. It has to be 2, right? Because E is between 2 and 3. So those are the two numbers you must use if you must maximize. And so that's why 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 will not give you the highest number when you do it for 10. What works for you is 3 plus 3 plus 2 
plus two. Yes, so that's gonna be nine times four, which is 36 is better than 27, right? Okay, but if you use E, it will be even higher. I think it's 37 point something if you use E. So that's the point. So therefore, the optimal integers are mostly threes and some twos. That's how it should be. Okay, I hope this clarifies my claim, but this is calculus, not number theory. <laughs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.